Question 1. High levels of dust can be inhaled when performing tasks such as grinding, drilling, sanding and cutting. These levels are most dangerous when A. Working in a small room B. Using the tool in large, indoor area C. Working outdoor on a calm day D. Using the tool outside when it is windy Question 1 Answer A. Working in a small room Question 2. You need to sweep up dust that was created during your shift. You should A. Place a protective mask over your nose and mouth. B. Ensure that there is adequate ventilation. C. Dampen down the area. D. All of the above. Question 2 Answer D. All of the above. Question 3. You are required to undertake some work that will produce dust. What will need to do? A. Only work for a short period of time. B. Avoid the work, as dust can harm your respiratory system. C. Begin work immediately, dust is hardly dangerous. D. Wear the correct personal protective equipment, PPE, and use devices that will control airborne dust. Question 3 Answer D. Wear the correct personal protective equipment, PPE, and use devices that will control airborne dust. Question 4. When using water to help control the levels of dust when cutting, what should you do? A. Make certain that you are using as much water as possible. B. Pour water onto a surface before you begin cutting. C. Ask a co-worker to stand next to you and pour water directly onto your workspace. D. Make sure that the flow of water is adjusted correctly. Question 4 Answer D. Make sure that the flow of water is adjusted correctly. Question 5. What two methods can you use to reduce the amount of dust from becoming airborne? A. Place a dust collector on the machine. B. Wear a protective mask. C. Keep your area neat. D. Work carefully and slowly. E. Wet cutting. Question 5 Answer A. Place a dust collector on the machine. E. Wet cutting. Question 6. When using a power tool for cutting and grinding, why is it important for the dust to be collected? A. It will save time and avoid a mess. B. A machine guard is not necessary if the dust is collected. C. Dust can be harmful if it is inhaled. D. The tool performs better if dust is collected. Question 6 Answer. C. Dust can be harmful if it is inhaled. Question 7. Occupational asthma can make it impossible to work with specific materials. How is it caused? A. Constant exposure to rat droppings. B. Constant exposure to harmful levels of noise. C. Cutaneous, skin, contact with the hazardous materials. D. Breathing in hazardous substances such as dust, vapors and fumes. Question 7 Answer. D. Breathing in hazardous substances such as dust, vapors and fumes. Question 8. Being exposed to which of these items will not cause lung infections or diseases? A. Bird feces. B. Strong odors. C. Asbestos fibers. D. Silica in dust form. Question 8 Answer. B. Strong odors. Question 9. A nest of pigeons along with droppings are discovered in an area where you will be working. What should you do? A. Let the birds leave before continuing with your work. B. Cease work and ask a supervisor what you should do. C. Attempt to catch the birds. D. Continue with your tasks. Question 9 Answer. B. Cease work and ask a supervisor what you should do. Question 10. More construction workers die or suffer long-term health impacts from which of the following? A. Tripping and falling. B. Accidents involving vehicles. C. Falling from great heights. D. 
Inhaling hazardous substances. Question 10 Answer D. Inhaling hazardous substances. Question 11. You are working with a chemical and require respiratory protective equipment, RPE. If none has been given, what do you do? A. Work as quickly as possible. B. Smell the chemical to determine whether it is dangerous. C. Begin work but take breaks at 5 minute intervals. D. Do not work until the proper equipment and training have been provided. Question 11 Answer D. Do not work until the proper equipment and training have been provided. Question 12 You are provided with a dust mask to protect against dangerous fumes but this mask is partially damaged. What should you do? A. Begin your work but take regular breaks. B. Wear a second mask above the first. C. Work as quickly as possible. D. Do not start working until you are supplied with the proper protective equipment. Question 12 Answer D. Do not start working until you are supplied with the proper protective equipment. Question 13 Which of these tasks does not cause silica dust to enter into the air? A. Sawing wood. B. Cutting stones and blocks. C. Demolition of concrete floors or screeds. D. Sweeping up rubble. Question 13 Answer A. Sawing wood. Question 14. When you are drilling, grinding, sanding or dusting, how can you protect your lungs from long-term respiratory damage? A. Wear goggles and use a dust extractor or only wet cut. B. Use a regular dust mask, goggles and hearing protection. C. Only use FFP3 rated mask and goggles. D. Use FFP3 rated mask, an extraction device or a wet cut, impact goggles and hearing protection. Question 14 Answer D. Use FFP3 rated mask, an extraction device or a wet cut, impact goggles and hearing protection. Question 15. Solvents in paints and resins can lead to A. Lung issues. B. Headaches, nausea and dizziness. C. Other effects on the body. D. All of the above. Question 15. Answer. D. All of the above. Question 1. Which of the following would DH-40 relate to? A. The safest way to put out a fire. B. Safest way to store tools. C. Workplace exposure limits. D. The correct way to report an accident. Question 1 Answer. C. Workplace exposure limits. Question 2. Which of the following are the best fire extinguishers to use on electrical fires? Select two answers. A. Water. B. Foam. C. Wet chemical. D. CO2. E. Dry powder. Question 2 Answer. D. CO2. E. Dry powder. Question 3. You have seen a close call accident and the co-worker that was involved is worried about getting told off, you should A. Talk to him and make sure they are more careful. B. No matter what you will have to report it. C. They seemed okay so forget about it. D. Take them to your supervisor. Question 3 Answer B. No matter what you will have to report it. Question 4. With heavy loads you should A. Drag it across the floor B. Move in lighter safer loads C. Carry it on your shoulders D. Be left until someone can help Question 4 Answer B. Move in lighter safer loads Question 5. Why is the risk assessment so important? A. It will tell you the person in charge of the health and safety on the site. B. It will be used to delegate jobs to the workers. C. It will tell you where the tools are stored. D. It will tell you the safe way of doing a task. 
Question 5 Answer D. It will tell you the safe way of doing a task. Question 6. Which of these would be involved in a Class B fire? Please select two answers. A. Cooking oil. B. Propane. C. Kerosene. D. Gasoline. Question 6 Answer. C. Kerosene. D. Gasoline. Question 7. What is leptospirosis caused by? A. Ants. B. Rats and or livestock urinating in water or soil. C. Mosquitoes. D. Dead fish in water. Question 7 Answer. B. Rats and or livestock urinating in water or soil. Question 8. What color are exit signs? A. Green. B. Blue. C. Red. D. Yellow. Question 8 Answer. A. Green. Question 9. Asbestos will only affect women and men and not children, true or false? A. True. B. False. Question 9 Answer. B. False. Question 10. Which of the following does RIDA stand for? A. Reporting of Injuries, Diseases and Dangerous Occurrences Regulations. B. Reporting of Injuries, Deaths and Dangerous Occurrences Regulations. C. Reporting of Injuries, Destruction and Dangerous Occurrences Regulations. D. Reporting of Injuries, Diseases and Deadly Occurrences Regulations. Question 10 Answer. A. Reporting of Injuries, Diseases and Dangerous Occurrences Regulations. Question 11. After you have raised the fire alarm, what should you do next? A. You should hide under a desk. B. Look for your supervisor so you can inform them of the situation. C. Look for your co-worker and get them out the building. D. Leave the immediately. Question 11. Answer. D. Leave the immediately. Question 1. A permit to work allows A. Untrained people to work without supervision. B. Health and safety executive inspectors to visit the site. C. The emergency services to come onto the site after an accident. D. Certain jobs to be carried out under controlled conditions. Question 1 Answer. D. Certain jobs to be carried out under controlled conditions. Question 2. You are about to start a job. How will you know if it needs a permit to work? A. You do not need to know. Permits to work only affect managers. B. The health and safety executive will tell you. C. You will be given a permit to work at the site induction. D. You will not be allowed to start work until the permit to work has been issued. Question 2 Answer. D. You will not be allowed to start work until the permit to work has been issued. Question 3. Which type of accident kills most construction workers? A. Contact with electricity. B. Being run over by side transport. C. Falling from a height. D. Being hit by a falling object. Question 3. Answer. C. Falling from a height. Question 4. You can help prevent accidents by A. Becoming a first aider. B. Reporting unsafe working conditions. C. Knowing how to get help quickly. D. Know where the first aid is kept. Question 4. Answer. B. Reporting unsafe working conditions. Question 5. Which of these could be confused with the early signs of Viles disease? A. Diabetes. B. Influenza. C. Dermatitis. D. Hay fever. Question 5 Answer. B. Influenza. Question 6. You find pigeon droppings and a nest in the area where you are about to start work, what should you do? A. Let them fly away before carrying on with your work. 
B. Seek advice from someone and stop working. C. Try to catch the pigeons. D. Carry on with your work carefully. Question 6 Answer B. Seek advice from someone and stop working. Question 7 There are many kinds of dust at work. Breathing them for a long time can cause A. Glue ear. B. Skin cancer. C. Occupational asthma. D. Occupational dermatitis. Question 7 Answer C. Occupational asthma. Question 8. You need to move a load that is heavier on one side than the other. How should you pick this up? A. With the heavy side on your strong arm. B. With the heavy side towards you. C. With the heavy side away from you. D. With the heavy side on your weak arm. Question 8 Answer. B. With the heavy side towards you. Question 9. You need to move a load that might be too heavy for you. What should you do? A. Get someone to help you. B. Use an aid, such as a trolley or wheelbarrow. C. Divide a load into smaller loads if possible. D. All of the above. Question 9 Answer. D. All of the above. Question 10. You have been shown how you should be lifting a heavy load. After some thought you think you have a better way. How should you proceed? A. Forget your idea and do it the way you have been told. B. Ask your workmates to decide which way you should do it. C. Ignore what you have been told and do it your way. D. Discuss your idea with your supervisor. Question 10 Answer. D. Discuss your idea with your supervisor. Question 11. When you climb a ladder, you must A. Have two points of contact with the ladder at all times. B. Have two people on the ladder at all times. C. Have three points of contact with the ladder at all times. D. Use a safety harness. Question 11. Answer. C. Have three points of contact with the ladder at all times. Question 12. Tools and materials can easily fall from a scaffold platform. What is the best way to protect the people below? A. Tell them you will be working above. B. Make sure they are wearing safety helmets. C. Tell the people below to stop work and clear the area. D. Use brick guards to stop any items falling below. Question 12 Answer. D. Use brick guards to stop any items falling below. Question 13. You have been given disposable ear plugs to use, but they keep falling out. What should you do? A. Stop work until you get more suitable one and are shown how to fit them. B. Put rolled up tissue in each ear. C. Throw them away and work without them. D. Put two ear plugs in each ear so they stay in place. Question 13 Answer A. Stop work until you get more suitable one and are shown how to fit them. Question 14. You need to wear a full body harness. You have never used one before. What should you do? A. Try to work it out for yourself. B. Read the instruction book. C. Ask someone already wearing a harness to show you what to do. D. Ask for expert advice and training. Question 14 Answer. D. Ask for expert advice and training. Question 15. If you want to be a first aider, you should A. Buy a book on first aid and start treating people. B. Watch a first aider treating people then try it yourself. C. Ask if you can do a first aider's course. D. Speak to your doctor about it. Question 15 Answer. C. Ask if you can do a first teeter's course. Question 16. If someone falls and is not unconscious, what should you do? A. Give them mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitations. B. Slap their face to wake them up. C. Turn them over so they are lying on their back. D. Send for medical help. 
Question 16 Answer D. Send for medical help. To help prevent rats on the work site, what should every person do? A. Bring a large cap to site. B. Buy rat traps and put them round site. C. They should not leave bit of food lying around the work site. D. Ask the local authority to put down rat poison. Question 1 Answer C. They should not leave bit of food lying around the work site. Question 2. If you breathe in asbestos dust it can cause what? A. Painful joints. B. Lung disease. C. Aching muscles. D. Influenza. Question 2 Answer B. Lung disease. Question 3. The pad test label on a power tool tells you what? A. When the tool was made. B. Who tested the tool before it left the factory? C. When the next safety check is due. D. It is earth loop impedance. Question 3 Answer C. When the next safety check is due. Question 4. You are walking across the site, which is the best way to avoid having an accident with planned vehicles? A. Get a ride on the planned vehicle. B. Make sure you have the attention of the planned driver before you become too close to it. C. Keep to the pedestrian routes. D. Make sure you are wearing high-vis clothing. Question 4 Answer C. Keep to the pedestrian routes. Question 5. If you or a co-worker decides to go to a pub at lunchtime and they have a couple of beers, what should they do next? A. They must not return to the work site for the rest of the day. B. Stay away for an hour and then go back to work. C. Drink plenty of strong coffee then go back to work. D. Eat something, wait for 30 minutes then go back to work. Question 5 Answer A. They must not return to the work site for the rest of the day. Question 6. You are using an electric drill when it cuts out, how should you proceed? A. Pull the electric cable to see if it is loose. B. Shake it to see if it will start again. C. Switch off the power and look for signs of damage. D. Switch the power off and on a few times. Question 6 Answer C. Switch off the power and look for signs of damage. Question 7. You are walking across the site when a mobile crane backs up across you. What will need to do? A. Start to run so that you can pass behind the crane. B. Help the driver to back up. C. Wait or find another way around the crane. D. Pass close to the front of the crane. Question 7 Answer C. Wait or find another way around the crane. Question 8. You should not just rely on barrier cream to protect your skin from harmful substances because A. It can be hard to wash of your hands. B. It is known to irritate skin. C. It costs too much to use every day. D. Many harmful substances go straight through it. Question 8 Answer D. Many harmful substances go straight through it. Question 9. If you need to use a power tool in a waterlogged part of the site, it is safest to A. Use an air-powered tool if possible. B. Only use 230 volt equipment. C. Wear Wellington boots. D. Wrap a plastic bag around the tool. Question 9 Answer A. Use an air-powered tool if possible. Question 10. You see a driver that is spilling diesel on the ground while refueling an excavator. How should you proceed? A. Look for the spillage kit immediately. B. You must tell the driver right away. C. You can do nothing as it will seep into the ground. D. Tell your supervisor the next time you see them. Question 10 Answer B. You must tell the driver right away. Question 11. 
exposure to which of the these may not result in you getting lung disease? A. Silica dust. B. Steam. C. Asbestos. D. Bird droppings. Question 11. Answer. B. Steam. Question 12. If your hands get into contact with a hazardous substance when eating you can easily pass it onto your mouth. Give two answers how you could stop this. A. Put your protective gloves on inside out before you eat. B. Wash your hands before eating. C. Wear protective gloves while you are working. D. Wash the gloves you have been wearing and put them on inside out. E. Put barrier cream on before eating. Question 12 Answer B. Wash your hands before eating. C. Wear protective gloves while you are working. Question 13. If an extension cable has a cut in its outer cover, you should do what? A. Put a bigger fuse in the cable plug. B. Check the copper wires do not show through the cut then use the cable. C. Put electrical tape around the damaged area. D. Report the fault and make sure no one else uses the cable. Question 13 Answer D. Report the fault and make sure no one else uses the cable. Question 14. It is safe to work close to an overhead power line if A. You use a wooden ladder. B. You do not touch the line for more than 30 seconds. C. The power is switched off. D. It is not raining. Question 14 Answer C. The power is switched off. Question 15. There is smoke coming from the motor on your electric drill. What should you do? A. Unplug the drill and make sure no one else uses it. B. Allow the drill to cool for 30 minutes. C. Pour water over it. D. Use the carbon dioxide extinguisher. Question 15 Answer A. Unplug the drill and make sure no one else uses it. Question 16. You should use an RCD with 230 volts tool because A. It saves energy and lowers costs. B. It quickly cuts off the power if there is a fault. C. It makes the tool run at safe speeds. D. It lowers the voltage. Question 16 Answer B. It quickly cuts off the power if there is a fault. Gen 1. All unsafe working practices should be reported immediately. Whose responsibility is it to report unsafe working practices? A. Your supervisor only. B. Only the site manager can do this. C. Only a health and safety rep can do this. D. It's everyone's responsibility to report unsafe working practices. Question 1 Answer. D. It's everyone's responsibility to report unsafe working practices. Question 2. What should you do if you're unsure about a particular topic discussed during a site induction? A. Ask a colleague to clarify. B. Meet with the presenter at the end of the day to discuss it. C. Ask the presenter to explain further. D. Ask your health and safety rep to explain at your next break. Question 2 Answer C. Ask the presenter to explain further. Question 3. Prohibition notices are given to equipment that A. Only supervisors can use. B. Only managers can use. C. Only skilled workers can use. D. Should not be used until it's made safe. Question 3 Answer D. Should not be used until it's made safe. Question 4 While carrying out a task, you realize that another contractor's work is putting your safety at risk. What should you do? A. Approach the contractor and have a chat about the situation. B. Speak to your supervisor concerning the matter. C. Speak to the contractor's supervisors concerning the matter. D. Carry on working but keep a close eye on what's going on around you. Question 4 Answer B. 
speak to your supervisor concerning the matter. Question 5. As an employee it's your responsibility to do all the following except, choose two answers. A. Raise concerns about safety issues. B. Write your own risk assessments. C. Report unsafe working practices. D. Provide your own PPE. Question 5 Answer. B. Write your own risk assessments. D. Provide your own PPE. Question 6. In the event of an accident a first aider can do all the following except A. Perform CPR. B. Bandage your cuts or wounds. C. Move you while you're unconscious. D. Prescribe and give you medicines to help you recover. Question 6 Answer. D. Prescribe and give you medicines to help you recover. Question 7. Which of these does not belong in the fire triangle? A. Fuel. B. Oxygen. C. Source of ignition. D. CO2. Question 7 Answer. D. CO2. Question 8. When using fire extinguishers the term pass stands for underscore. A. Pull. Aim. Squeeze. Sweep. B. Point. Aim. Squeeze. Sweep. C. Pull. Aim. Squeeze. Smother. D. Point. Aim. Squeeze. Smother. Question 8 answer. A. Pull. Aim. Squeeze. Sweep. Question 9. What should you do if you have no hearing protection and someone is using very noisy equipment near you? A. Work quickly then move away from that area. B. Leave the area immediately and get the right hearing protection for your situation. C. Ask the person to wait until you leave to use it. D. Carry on working and just try to ignore the noise. Question 9 Answer. B. Leave the area immediately and get the right hearing protection for your situation. Question 10. Who can use a class 3 ladder to carry out work on a building site? A. Only a supervisor can use a class 3 ladder on site. B. Anyone can use a class 3 ladder on site. C. Class 3 ladders should not be used on site. D. Only a trained worker can use a class 3 ladder on site. Question 10 Answer C. Class 3 ladders should not be used on site. Question 1. Why is it important for you to keep your working environment clean and tidy? A. To prevent rats and other animals that could spread diseases. B. To reduce the risk of slips, trips, and falls. C. To reduce environmental side effects. D. All of the above. Question 1 Answer. D. All of the above. Question 2. If RPE is needed for a task but you can't find it what would you do? A. Carry on with the task and ask your supervisor when he comes along. B. Carry on with the task and take breaks at regular intervals. C. Create a temporary mask with a towel or rag. D. Wait until you get the correct RPE before starting. Question 2 Answer. D. Wait until you get the correct RPE before starting. Question 3. Which of these is most likely if your body comes into contact with wet cement? A. Leptospirosis. B. Vibration white finger. C. Temporary hearing loss. D. Chemical burns and dermatitis. Question 3 Answer. D. Chemical burns and dermatitis. Question 4. At what angle should ladders be placed against the wall? A. 75 degrees. B. 40 degrees. C. 50 degrees. D. 65 degrees. Question 4 Answer. A. 75 degrees. Question 5. Which of these statements is not true about ladders? A. You should have at least three points of contact while on a ladder. 
B. A ladder should tied at the top to ensure it doesn't slip. C. A ladder should be painted to prevent wear and tear. D. You should inspect the ladder before using it. Question 5 Answer C. A ladder should be painted to prevent wear and tear. Question 6. What does PAT mean? A. Professional Appliance Test. B. Portable Application Test. C. Portable Appliance Test. D. Professional Application Test. Question 6 Answer. C. Portable Appliance Test. Question 7. Which of these would have to undergo a PAT test in your workplace? A. A microwave. B. A coffee maker. C. A radio. D. A battery-powered radio. Question 7 Answer. A. A microwave. B. A coffee maker. C. A radio. Question 8. What is the main reason for reporting accidents? A. So employees can make a claim for compensation. B. Someone needs to be blamed for the accident. C. So employers and employees can learn from and prevent the same accidents in the future. D. Employers need to keep records for survey purposes. Question 8 Answer. C. So employers and employees can learn from and prevent the same accidents in the future. Question 9. You find yourself on the job site next to a co-worker who is utilizing a loud piece of machinery. You are wearing no hearing protection. What should you do? A. Immediately stop and speak with the supervisor of your co-worker. B. Continue working, as the job site will always be noisy. C. Tell the worker to stop the job they are currently performing. D. Leave the area until you have secured the correct personal protective equipment, PPE, for your ears. Question 9 Answer. D. Leave the area until you have secured the correct personal protective equipment, PPE, for your ears. Question 10. It is a general rule that noise levels may be excessive if you must shout to speak to someone how far away? A. 6 meters. B. 4 meters. C. 5 meters. D. 2 meters. Question 10 Answer. D. 2 meters. Question 1. How many employees does a company need before risk assessments are recorded? A. Between 5 10. B. Between 10 20. C. 5 or more. D. Just one is needed. Question 1 Answer. C. 5 or more. Question 2. Which of these best describes a hazard? A. Something that is potentially harmful. B. Tools lying around on the floor. C. Cables lying around on the floor. D. Unlabeled chemicals. Question 2 Answer. A. Something that is potentially harmful. Question 3. What is the cause of most accidents? A. Poisoning. B. Slips, trips and falls. C. Electrocution. D. Suffocation. Question 3 Answer. B. Slips, trips and falls. Question 4. In which year was the Health and Safety at Work Act enacted? A. 1947. B. 1974. C. 1957. D. 1975. Question 4 Answer. B. 1974. Question 5. Where would you go if your fire alarm was activated? A. Your manager's office. B. The fire assembly point. C. Go to your car and wait. D. Exit the building and go home. Question 5 Answer. B. The fire assembly point. Question 6. What chemical fire extinguishers are identified by which color? A. Red. B. Black. C. Cream. 
D. Yellow. Question 6 answer, D. Yellow. Question 7. The safest way to lift a load is to A. Keep your back rounded at all times. B. Keep your back straight at all times. C. Keep your feet as close as possible. D. Keep your feet slightly apart with your back rounded. Question 7 Answer B. Keep your back straight at all times. Question 8. Electrical fires are best tackled with a A. Water fire extinguisher. B. CO2 fire extinguisher. C. Wet chemical fire extinguisher. D. Foam fire extinguisher. Question 8 Answer B. CO2 fire extinguisher. Question 9. Who should report unsafe working practices at work? A. Your supervisor only. B. Your health and safety rep only. C. Anyone who notices it. D. Your line manager only. Question 9 Answer. C. Anyone who notices it. Question 1. Site inductions should be attended by A. Supervisors only. B. Everyone who will be on site. C. Managers only. D. Short term visitors only. Question 1 Answer B. Everyone who will be on site. Question 2. Being exposed to engine oil can cause A. Hearing problems. B. Skin problems. C. Lung cancer. D. Temporary loss of breath. Question 2 Answer B. Skin problems. Question 3. Which of these are common causes of accidents on a construction work site? A. Slips, trips and falls. B. Falling from height. C. Inhaling hazardous substances. D. All of the above. Question 3 Answer. D. All of the above. Question 4. For maximum safety disposable masks should be discarded after? A. 6 days. B. 2 weeks. C. 1 day or 1 shift. D. 3 days. Question 4 Answer. C. 1 day or 1 shift. Question 5. Besides hearing loss what can excessive noise cause? A. Headaches. B. Temporary blindness. C. Skin disease. D. Heart disease. Question 5 Answer. A. Headaches. Question 6. What does this sign mean? A. Danger fragile roof. B. Caution tripping hazards on roof. C. No entry roof on safe. D. Danger roof incomplete. Question 6 Answer A. Danger fragile roof. Question 7. What does this sign mean? A. Eye protection recommended. B. Opaque eye protection must be worn. C. Eye protection not needed beyond this point. D. Eye protection must be worn. Question 7 Answer. D. Eye protection must be worn. Question 8. What does this sign mean? A. Hand washing area. B. Protective gloves must be worn. C. Protective gloves recommended. D. Use barrier cream. Question 8 Answer. B. Protective gloves must be worn. Question 1. What does EH40 relate to? A. Safe ways of putting out a fire. B. Safe way of storing tools. C. Workplace exposure limits. D. Correct ways of reporting an accident. Question 1 Answer. C. Workplace exposure limits. Question 2. What does RIDER stand for? A. 
reporting of injuries, diseases and dangerous occurrences regulations. b. Reporting of injuries, deaths and dangerous occurrences regulations. c. Reporting of injuries, destruction and dangerous occurrences regulations. d. Reporting of injuries, diseases and deadly occurrences regulations. Question 2 Answer A. Reporting of injuries, diseases and dangerous occurrences regulations. Question 3. You witness a near miss and the worker involved is afraid of getting into trouble what should you do? A. Have a chat with him and ask him to be careful next time. B. Report it. C. He seems okay so all is fine. D. Take him to your supervisor immediately. Question 3 Answer B. Report it. Question 4. Whenever possible heavy loads should be A. Dragged along the floor. B. Split into lighter manageable loads. C. Carried on your shoulder. D. Left until a colleague can assist. Question 4 Answer B. Split into lighter manageable loads. Question 5. A risk assessment is important because A. It tells you who is in charge of health and safety at your work site. B. It is used to delegate tasks among workers. C. It tells you where tools should be stored. D. It tells you the safest way of performing a task. Question 5 Answer. D. It tells you the safest way of performing a task. Question 6. After raising a fire alarm, what's the next thing you should do? A. Hide under a desk. B. Find your supervisor and inform of the situation. C. Find your colleagues and take them out the building. D. Leave the building immediately. Question 6 Answer. D. Leave the building immediately. Question 7. Leptospirosis is a bacterial infection commonly caused by A. Rats and livestock urinating in water B. Ants C. Fish dying in water D. Mosquitoes Question 7 Answer A. Rats and livestock urinating in water Question 8. Exit signs are one of the most vital safety signs on any site. What color are they? A. Red. B. Yellow. C. Green. D. Blue. Question A. Tasser. C. Green. Question 9. Asbestos is a toxic substance that affects men and women only but not children. A. True. B. False. Question 9. Answer. B. False. Question 1. All of the following statements are true about using podium steps except A. You must ensure the wheels are locked before getting on. B. Podiums are 100% safe and cannot topple over. C. Like all other equipment podiums must be inspected regularly. D. Podiums can topple over so you must take care when reaching sideways. Question 1 Answer. B. Podiums are 100% safe and cannot topple over. Question 2. What is the leading cause of death among construction workers? A. Being hit by vehicles on site. B. Leptospirosis. C. Falling from height. D. Electrocution. Question 2. Answer. C. Falling from height. Question 3. Which of these statements is true about using ladders? A. Only one person should work on a ladder. B. Two people can work on the same ladder if it is long enough. C. Two people can work on the same ladder if the supervisor approves. D. Two people can work on the same ladder only if someone else holds the ladder. Question 3 Answer. A. Only one person should work on a ladder. Question 4. What should you do if the ladder you're about to use is damaged? A. 
Carry on using the ladder but stay away from the damaged section. B. Try to fix the ladder yourself. C. Put the ladder in a corner and leave it there. D. Stop using it, report it and let your colleagues know the ladder is not safe. Question 4 Answer D. Stop using it, report it and let your colleagues know the ladder is not safe. Question 5 What should you do if you need to use a mobile tower scaffold but the wheel brakes aren't working? A. Ask a colleague to hold the tower while you work. B. Carry on using it only if the floor is level. C. Use a rock or a piece of wood to wedge the wheels and stop them from moving. D. Do not use it. Question 5 Answer. D. Do not use it. Question 6. Ladders should never be painted because A. The paint causes the ladder to become slippery. B. The paint can hide or mask damaged parts of the ladder. C. You will need to repaint the ladder regularly. D. The paint could cause a distraction to the person using the ladder. Question 6 Answer B. The paint can hide or mask damaged parts of the ladder. Question 7. Which of these statements is true about storing materials on a working platform? A. Unsecured materials can be stored as long as they are above the guardrail height. B. The materials only need securing if it's going to be there overnight. C. The materials don't need to be secured if they're going to be there less than 6 hours. D. You must ensure the platform can take the weight of the materials and the materials must be stored securely so they can't fall. Question 7 Answer. D. You must ensure the platform can take the weight of the materials and the materials must be stored securely so they can't fall. Question 8. The best way to ensure a ladder is secured and won't slip is to A. Tie it at the bottom. B. Tie it at the top. C. Have a colleague hold it while you work. D. Use a piece of wood to wedge the bottom. Question 8 Answer. B. Tie it at the top. Question 9. Which of these best describes working at height? A. 5 meters above the ground. B. 6 meters above the ground. C. 10 meters above the ground. D. Any height above or below ground level that can cause an injury if you fall. Question 9 Answer. D. Any height above or below ground level that can cause an injury if you fall. Question 10. How many points of contact should you have with a ladder at all times? A. 4. B. 1. C. 3. D. 2. Question 10 Answer. C. 3. Question 11. Which of these would you not put a mobile tower scaffold on? A. An abandoned parking lot. B. A concrete walkway. C. An uneven playground. D. An asphalt road. Question 11 Answer C. An uneven playground. Question 12. Checking a ladder before use should be done by A. Your supervisor. B. Your health and safety rep. C. The person about to use it. D. The safe manager. Question 12 Answer C. The person about to use it. Question 1. Over time, excess noise can damage your ability to hear. Can such a condition be reversed? A. Yes, but you will be forced to change your current job. B. With time, the condition may repair itself. C. The damage is permanent and cannot be reversed. D. You will need surgery to repair your hearing loss. Question 1 Answer. C. The damage is permanent and cannot be reversed. Question 2. You have just finished working with a particularly noisy piece of equipment and you have a ringing in your ears. What does this symptom imply? A. Your body has been exposed to excess vibration. B. You may be coming down with the flu or respiratory infection. 
C. The level of noise was high, but it was still safe. D. You've temporarily damaged your hearing. Question 2 Answer. D. You've temporarily damaged your hearing. Question 3. Over time, excess noise can damage your hearing. Which of these is an early sign of this? A. Infections of the inner ear. B. There are no early signs. C. A rash may appear around the outside of your ear. D. A ringing sound or even a temporary hearing loss may occur. Question 3 Answer. D. A ringing sound or even a temporary hearing loss may occur. Question 4. Give two separate answers as to how excess noise can affect your health. A. Loss of hearing. B. Constant ear infections. C. An excess buildup of wax in your ears. D. Persistent headaches. E. A condition known as vibration white finger. Question 4 Answers. A. Loss of hearing. D. Persistent headaches. Question 5. You believe that excess noise at the job site has damaged your hearing. What do you need to do? A. Take a few sick days and rest. B. Have your doctor or employer arrange a hearing test for you. C. Place cotton wads in your ears to prevent any future damage. D. There is nothing that you can do. The damage is permanent and cannot be undone. Question 5 Answer. B. Have your doctor or employer arrange a hearing test for you. Question 6. You find yourself on the job site next to a co-worker who is using a loud piece of machinery. You are wearing no hearing protection. What do you need to do? A. Immediately stop and speak with the supervisor of your co-worker. B. Continue working, as the job site will always be noisy. C. Tell the worker to stop what they are doing. D. Leave the area until you have secured the correct personal protective equipment, PPE. Question 6 Answer. D. Leave the area until you have secured the correct personal protective equipment, PPE. Question 7. It is a general rule that noise levels may be excessive if you must shout to speak to someone how far away? A. 6 meters. B. 4 meters. C. 5 meters. D. 2 meters. Question 7 Answer. D. 2 meters. Question 8. Your job requires you to wear ear defenders while on site. However, one of the pads is missing. What should you do? A. Use a piece of cloth and wrap it around the shell while continuing to work. B. Wear them as they are and continue working. C. Do not wear them. Work without hearing protection. D. Wait until the pad is replaced before entering into a noisy area. Question 8 Answer. D. Wait until the pad is replaced before entering into a noisy area. Question 9. When working in a hearing protection zone, you must A. Use hearing protection when the noises are too loud to stand. B. Be careful not to make excess noise. C. Wear the appropriate hearing protection at all times. D. Have adequate hearing protection in case you need it. Question 9 Answer. C. Wear the appropriate hearing protection at all times. Question 10. By wearing hearing protection you will A. Eliminate all possibilities of being exposed to excess noise levels. B. Reduce the amount of noise you're exposed to. C. Improve your hearing. D. Reverse any previous hearing problems. Question 10 Answer. B. Reduce the amount of noise you're exposed to. Question 1. When does your employer need to provide a first aid box? A. When the total number of employees exceeds 10. B. When the total number of employees exceeds 35. C. Every site should be equipped with a first aid box regardless of the number of employees. D. 
First aid boxes are provided at the company's discretion and are not compulsory. Question 1 Answer C. Every site should be equipped with a first aid box regardless of the number of employees. Question 2. Protective midsoles on your footwear are used to A. Increase comfort throughout the day. B. Support your ankles and prevent them from twisting. C. Protect your feet from falling objects. D. Protect your feet if you step on nails and other sharp objects. Question 2 Answer D. Protect your feet if you step on nails and other sharp objects. Question 3. Why are site inductions important? A. The work site health and safety rules are discussed during the site induction. B. It gives you the opportunity to formally meet your colleagues. C. It allows you to have a look around at the work site. D. It gives you the opportunity to meet the site manager and supervisors. Question 3 Answer A. The work site health and safety rules are discussed during the site induction. Question 4. Class 3 ladders are suitable for A. Heavy duty and industrial purposes. B. Domestic use. C. Both industrial and domestic purposes. D. Building site purposes. Question 4 Answer B. Domestic use. Question 5. When working in a hearing protection zone you must A. Be as quiet as possible. B. Not use any loud equipment or machinery. C. Ensure you wear hearing protection. D. Work as fast as possible and then leave in order to reduce the noise level. Question 5 Answer C. Ensure you wear hearing protection. Question 6. What should you do if you notice a safety hazard that no one else seems to notice? A. Stay away from that area. B. Report it to your supervisor immediately. C. Keep on working and report it at the end of your shift. D. Report it to your colleagues and tell them to stay away from that area. Question 6 Answer B. Report it to your supervisor immediately. Question 7. Why is it important to sign in whenever you are on site? A. To ensure you're working your correct hours. B. To ensure you're accounted for in the event of an evacuation. C. The HSE needs records of your working hours. D. Signing in is optional and not compulsory. Question 7 Answer B. To ensure you're accounted for in the event of an evacuation. Question 8. Which of these fire extinguishers are most suitable for use on electrical fires? A. CO2 and dry powder. B. CO2 and water. C. CO2 and foam. D. Foam and dry powder. Question 8 Answer. A. CO2 and dry powder. Question 1. Which of the following should be classed as hazardous waste? A. Fluorescent light tubes. B. Broken ceramic tiles or bricks. C. Glass. D. Polythene and shrink wrap. Question 1 Answer. A. Fluorescent light tubes. Question 2. There has been a spillage of hydraulic oil from plant working near a watercourse. What one action should you not do? A. Notify the site manager. B. Switch the plant off. C. Contain the spillage. D. Use detergents to clean up the oil. Question 2 Answer. D. Use detergents to clean up the oil. Question 3. Which two actions could help minimize waste? Select two answers. A. Leave bags of cement and plaster out in the rain unprotected. B. Reuse of cuts as far as possible rather than discarding them. C. Use new material, packs at the beginning of each day. D. Only take or open what you need and return or reseal anything left over. E. Always take much more than required just in case you need it.
Question 3 Answer B. Reuse of cuts as far as possible rather than discarding them. D. Only take or open what you need and return or reseal anything left over. Question 4. The high levels of solvents in some paints and resins can cause A. Lung problems. B. Headaches, dizziness and sickness. C. Effects on other parts of your body. D. All of the above. Question 4 Answer D. All of the above. Question 5. When drilling, cutting, sanding or grinding, what is the best way to protect your long-term health from harmful dust? A. Wear FFP3 rated dust mask and impact goggles. B. Wear any disposable dust mask, hearing protection and impact goggles. C. Use dust extraction or wet cut and wear light eye protection. D. Use dust extraction or wet cut, wear FFP3 rated dust mask, hearing protection and impact goggles. Question 5 Answer D. Use dust extraction or wet cut, wear FFP3 rated dust mask, hearing protection and impact goggles. Question 6 you have been given a dust mask to protect you against hazardous fumes, what should you do? A. Start work but take a break now and again. B. Do not start work until you have the correct respiratory proactive equipment, RPE. C. Do the job but work quickly. D. Wear a second dust mask on top of the first. Question 6 Answer B. Do not start work until you have the correct respiratory proactive equipment, RPE. Question 7. You have finished your work and need to sweep up the dust created, what should you do? A. Make sure there is plenty of ventilation. B. Dampen down the area. C. Put your protective mask back on. D. All of the above. Question 7 Answer. D. All of the above. Question 8. Which of the following do you need to do to ensure that your mask works? A. Check it's the correct type needed. B. Check you are wearing it correctly. C. Pass a face fit test wearing the mask. D. All of the above. Question 8. Answer. D. All of the above. Question 9. You are using water as part of dust control and run out, what should you do? A. Carry on as you have nearly finished. B. Stop and refill with water. C. Carry on but get someone to sweep up afterwards. D. Ask everyone to clean the area and then carry on. Question 9 Answer. B. Stop and refill with water. Question 10. Which of these activities does not create silica dust, which is harmful if breathed in? A. Break up concrete floors and screeds. B. Sawing timber and plywood. C. Chasing out walls and mortar joints or sweeping up rubble. D. Cutting curbs, stone, paving slabs, bricks and blocks. Question 10 Answer. B. Sawing timber and plywood. Question 11. There are many kinds of dust and fumes at work, breathing them in over time can cause you to develop A. Skin cancer B. Occupational dermatitis C. Sore throat D. Occupational lung disease Question 11. Answer D. Occupational lung disease The health and safety sign below is used to indicate A. Fire hose location B. Fire assembly location C. Fire extinguisher location D. Fire alarm point Question 1 Answer D. Fire alarm point Question 2. What should you do if you discover a child wandering around on a construction site? A. Escort the child to safety immediately. B. Just ignore it as it's not your problem. C. Find your supervisor and report it. D. 
Find your state manager and report it. Question 2 Answer A. Escort the child to safety immediately. Question 3. What does the health and safety sign below mean? A. Dangerous to the environment. B. Hot liquid. C. Corrosive. D. Irritant. Question 3 Answer C. Corrosive. Question 4. What does the health and safety sign below mean? A. Dangerous to the environment. B. No fishing in this area. C. Do not dump refuse here. D. Protected wildlife area. Question 4 Answer A. Dangerous to the environment. Question 5. If high visibility clothing is needed to carry out your work, who should provide this? A. Your employer needs to provide it then have the cost deducted from your wages. B. Your local job center will provide this. C. Your employer needs to provide this. D. You need to buy your own. Question 5 Answer C. Your employer needs to provide this. Question 6. To help prevent injuries caused by manual handling you should do all the following except A. Learn proper lifting and carrying techniques. B. Use lifting equipment. C. Disperse your items into smaller loads. D. Carry as much items as possible to get the task completed faster. Question 6 Answer D. Carry as much items as possible to get the task completed faster. Question 7. Class B fires are fires involving all of the following except? Choose two answers. A. Kerosene. B. Propane. C. Gasoline. D. Cooking oil. Question 7 Answer. B. Propane. D. Cooking oil. Question 8. Which class of fire does magnesium and aluminium materials fall under? A. Class D. B. Class B. C. Class A. D. Class F. Question 8 Answer. A. Class D. Question 9. Which of these two types of fire extinguishers are most suitable for use on electrical fires? Choose two answers. A. Water. B. Foam. C. Wet chemical. D. CO2. E. Dry powder. Question 9 Answer. D. CO2. E. Dry powder. Question 10. In the event of a fire you should do all the following except A. Exit the building immediately using the nearest lift. B. Call the fire brigade. C. Operate the nearest fire alarm. D. Tickle the fire if safe and trained to do so. Question 10 Answer A. Exit the building immediately using the nearest lift. Question 1. What should you do if the guard from a power tool need to use is missing? A. Improvise and make your own. B. Carry on using it but be very careful and work very slowly. C. Use the tool as fast as you can to complete the task quickly. D. Do not use the tool unless you get the correct guard fitted. Question 1 Answer. D. Do not use the tool unless you get the correct guard fitted. Question 2. If you need to operate a power tool you must be A. Trained and competent. B. At least 16 years old. C. At least 18 years old. D. At least 21 years old. Question 2 Answer A. Trained and competent. Question 3. What should you do if the extension wire you need to use has a cut in the outer cover? A. If you can't see the copper wires inside then carry on using it. B. Use electrical tape to cover it and then carry on working. C. Report it immediately and make sure no one else uses it. D. Carry on using it but avoid going near the cut part. Question 3 Answer. C. 
report it immediately and make sure no one else uses it. Question 4. Which of these must you do if you're required to use an extension cable? Choose two answers. A. You must only uncoil the length you need to use. B. You must uncoil the entire cable. C. Check the entire length and cable connectors for damage. D. You must only check the length you need for damage. Question 4 Answer B. You must uncoil the entire cable. C. Check the entire length and cable connectors for damage. Question 5. Which of these must you do if you need to run an electrical cable across an area used by vehicles? Choose two answers. A. Ensure that you use yellow tape to wrap it as this would make it visible to drivers. B. Use bare wood or scaffold boards to cover the cable. C. Use a protective ramp to cover the cable. D. Put up a ramp ahead sign. Question 5 Answer C. Use a protective ramp to cover the cable. D. Put up a ramp ahead sign. Question 6. What should you do if you are required to work in an area that has exposed electrical cable? A. Touch it quickly to ensure that it's not live. B. If there are no sparks coming from the cable then it's safe to assume that it's not live. C. Move the cable out of your path and carry on working. D. Do not go near the cable and report to your supervisor immediately. Question 6 Answer D. Do not go near the cable and report to your supervisor immediately. Question 7. What two things can you do can you do to help prevent slips and trips while using an extension cable? A. Run the cables and leads in the middle of the room so it can be visible to everyone. B. Run the cables and leads close to the wall. C. Run the cables and leads above head height over doorways and walkways. D. Tie up excess cables and leads into a very small coil. Question 7 Answer B. Run the cables and leads close to the wall. C. Run the cables and leads above head height over doorways and walkways. Question 8. Why must you be fully trained before using a cartridge operated tool? A. Because they're very heavy and can cause injuries if you lift them incorrectly. B. They can be dangerous to an inexperienced person because they operate like a gun. C. If you use it incorrectly it can cause dermatitis. D. It has many exposed electrical parts. Question 8 Answer B. They can be dangerous to an inexperienced person because they operate like a gun. Question 9. When should you check your tools and equipment for damage? A. At least once a month. B. At least once every three months. C. At least once every six months. D. It should always be checked before you use it. Question 9 Answer D. It should always be checked before you use it. Question 10. Why should you use a RCD with 230 volt tools? A. Because it reduces energy consumption and lowers cost. B. Because it cuts off the power quickly if there's a fault. C. It allows the tools to run at a safe speed. D. It allows the tools run at a higher speed. Question 10 Answer B. Because it cuts off the power quickly if there's a fault. Question 11. To check if a RCD connected to a power tool is working you should A. Press the test button on the RCD. B. Try running the tool at top speed to see if it cuts out. C. Switch the tool on and off. D. Switch the power on and off. Question 11 Answer A. Press the test button on the RCD. Question 12. What does the portable appliance testing pad label on a power tool tell you? Choose two answers. A. The year the tool was manufactured. B. The date the next safety check is due. C. The company the tool belongs to. D. The previous date the tool was tested. Question 12 Answer B. The date the next safety check is due. 
D. The previous date the tool was tested. Question 13. What is the recommended safe voltage for electrical equipment on a building site? A. 5.5 volts. B. 9 volts. C. 12 volts. D. 110 volts. E. 230 volts. Question 13 Answer D. 110 volts. Question 14. What should the color of a 110 volt power cable and connector be? A. Green. B. Yellow. C. Red. D. Black. Question 14 Answer B. Yellow. Question 15. Why is it that building sites use 110 volt instead of the regular 230 volt domestic supply? A. Mainly because it is a lot cheaper. B. Because it's less likely to kill you. C. It has less impact on the environment. D. Most power tools are designed for 110 volt only. Question 15 Answer B. Because it's less likely to kill you. Question 1. Using eye protection is vital for on-site safety. When should you wear eye protection? A. Only when you're working with power tools. B. Only when you're working with hazardous chemicals. C. When the task has a potential for eye injury and if the site rules demand it. D. Only when your eyes come into direct sunlight. Question 1 Answer. C. When the task has a potential for eye injury and if the site rules demand it. Question 2. Protective midsoles and your safety footwear are designed to A. Prevent you from twisting your ankle. B. Prevent chemical burns if you step on hazardous chemicals. C. Ensure your footwear remains comfortable throughout the day. D. Protect your feet from nails and other sharp objects. Question 2 Answer D. Protect your feet from nails and other sharp objects. Question 3. What should you do if you're given a task that requires you to wear a full body harness but you've never used one before? A. Carry on and try to work it out yourself. B. Ask a colleague who wears one for advice. C. Ask for an expert to train you. D. Ask for the instruction manual and figure it out yourself. Question 3 Answer C. Ask for an expert to train you. Question 4. Wearing a safety helmet in hot weather can be uncomfortable. Which of these is true about wearing a safety helmet in hot weather? A. You can drill small holes in your helmet to increase airflow and keep you cool. B. You can take it off for short periods of time while you're working. C. You must keep it on at all times and ensure you're wearing it correctly. D. You can wear it sideways if it's more comfortable this way. Question 4 Answer C. You must keep it on at all times and ensure you're wearing it correctly. Question 5. What should you do if you accidentally drop your safety helmet and crack it? A. Get another one immediately. B. Wait until your break and get another one. C. Carry on working if it's only a small crack. D. Wait until the end of your shift and get another one for the next day. Question 5 Answer. A. Get another one immediately. Question 6. If your job role requires specific type of PPE when you need to pay for this? A. Yes, you'll need to pay a percentage of the total cost. B. No, your employer must provide all PPE necessary to carry out a job. C. Yes, everyone is responsible for providing their own PPE. D. Maybe, you might need to pay as PPE is provided at your employer's discretion. Question 6 Answer B. No. Your employer must provide all PPE necessary to carry out a job. Question 7. What should you do if your safety footwear gets damaged while working? A. Try to fix it and carry on working. B. 
Throw it away and use your trainers. C. Keep using it until your next break and then replace it. D. Get a replacement immediately. Question 7 Answer. D. Get a replacement immediately. Question 8. All of these statements are true about PPE except A. PPE must be worn in accordance with the instructions. B. You are responsible for providing your own PPE if the ones you're given is lost. C. Any damage to your PPE must be reported to your supervisor. D. You must ensure your PPE is stored correctly when you're not using it. Question 8 Answer B. You are responsible for providing your own PPE if the ones you're given is lost. Question 9. What should you do if the disposable earplugs you're given keeps falling out of your ears? A. Throw them away, continue working and get another pair at your next break. B. Take them out and continue working. C. Stop working until you get a pair that fits correctly. D. Secure it with some rolled up paper. Question 9 Answer C. Stop working until you get a pair that fits correctly. Question 10. It's important for you to wear the correct type of gloves when dealing with hazardous substances. If you don't then you're like to succumb to A. Arthritis B. Vibration white finger C. Raynaud syndrome D. Skin disease Question 10 Answer D. Skin disease What should you do if you need to store materials on a flat roof but you cannot fit edge protection? Choose three answers. A. You must ensure that the materials are stored in such a way that they cannot fall. B. You must ensure that you install a cant a lever safety net below the roof edge. C. You must ensure that the materials do not endanger your colleagues or others in that area. D. You must ensure that you and your colleagues can have safe access to the stored materials. Question 1 Answer A. You must ensure that the materials are stored in such a way that they cannot fall. C. You must ensure that the materials do not endanger your colleagues or others in that area. D. You must ensure that you and your colleagues can have safe access to the stored materials. Question 2. What should you do if you need to use a safety lanyard but the stitching is damaged? A. Dispose of it and carry on working without one. B. Continue using the lanyard only if the damaged stitching is less than 4 inches. C. Ask for a replacement and do not start working until you have a suitable replacement. D. Continue to use the lanyard and get another one at the end of your shift. Question 2 Answer C. Ask for a replacement and do not start working until you have a suitable replacement. Question 3. If you are using inflatable airbags as a means of fall or rest you must ensure that the inflation pump A. Is electrically powered. B. Is turned off every couple of minutes to avoid the airbags from overinflation. C. Is turned off as soon as the airbags are full. D. Stays on at all times when there's work being carried out at height. Question 3 Answer D. Stays on at all times when there's work being carried out at height. Question 4 What is edge protection designed to do? A. It's designed to stop materials and people from falling over. B. It's designed to direct rainwater into a specific area. C. It's designed to allow easier access to the roof. D. It's designed to stop unauthorized entry to the roof. Question 4 Answer A. It's designed to stop materials and people from falling over. Question 5. What is the maximum permitted gap between the guardrails on a working platform? A. 300 mm B. 470 mm C. 500 mm D. 520 mm Question 5 Answer B. 470 mm Question 6. 
How should you wear your safety helmet if you need to lean over an exposed edge while working at height? A. You should tilt your helmet backwards which should prevent it from falling over. B. You should tilt your helmet to the side which will help to prevent it from falling over. C. You should ensure you make use of the chin strap and wear the helmet as normal. D. You should not wear your helmet while carrying out these tasks. Question 6 Answer C. You should ensure you make use of the chin strap and wear the helmet as normal. Question 7. What should you do if you discover a rung missing near the top of the ladder you're about to use? A. Use the ladder but make sure you're very careful when going over the missing rung. B. Stop using the ladder and report the defect immediately. C. Flip the ladder so the missing rung stays closer to the ground. D. Use the ladder but make sure a colleague holds the ladder while you're on it. Question 7 Answer B. Stop using the ladder and report the defect immediately. Question 8. Guardrails are essential for safety while working at height. These should be fitted to a working platform when A. There's a possibility you could fall 5 meters. B. These should only be fitted if you need to store materials on the working platform. C. There's a possibility of you getting injured if you fall. D. There's a possibility you could fall 10 meters. Question 8 Answer C. There's a possibility of you getting injured if you fall. Question 9. Using the Beaufort scale is vital for your safety while working at height externally because it measures A. How much weight you can store safely on a roof. B. How much weight you can store safely on a scaffold. C. How many people can be on a roof at the same time? D. The wind speed. Question 9 Answer. D. The wind speed. Question 10. What are Class 3 ladders? A. Class 3 ladders are ladders which are designed for use in industrial and construction environments only. B. Class 3 ladders should not be used on site as they're designed for domestic purposes. C. Class 3 ladders should only be used by trained workers on site. D. Class 3 ladders are the recommended choice for working near overhead cables. Question 10 Answer. B. Class 3 ladders should not be used on site as they're designed for domestic purposes. Question 11. Who should erect and dismantle a scaffold tower? A. Anyone who has worked on a scaffold tower before can do this. B. Only trained, competent and authorized people should carry out these tasks. C. Anyone with the instruction book in their possession can carry out these tasks. D. Anyone who has witnessed these tasks being carried out can perform them as well. Question 11 Answer B. Only trained, competent and authorized people should carry out these tasks. Question 1. What is the primary reason that employees must report any and all accidents that occur on the job site? A. Insurance reasons dictate that all incidents be reported. B. Accountability needs to be firmly established. C. Only major accidents need to be reported. D. Employers and employees can learn from the incident. Correct answer is, D. Employers and employees can learn from the incident. Question 2. Equipment that has been issued a prohibition notice must be, A. Operated by approved personnel. B. Operated by senior staff only. C. Cease to be operated until checked for safety. D. Discarded immediately. Correct answer is, C. Cease to be operated until checked for safety. Question 3. It's important for you to wear the correct type of gloves when dealing with hazardous substances. If you don't then you're like to succumb to A. Arthritis B. Vibration white finger C. Raynaud syndrome D. Skin disease Correct answer is D. Skin disease Question 4. If your job role requires specific type of PPE would you need to pay for this? A. Yes 
you'll need to pay a percentage of the total cost. b. No, your employer must provide all PPE necessary to carry out a job. c. Yes, everyone is responsible for providing their own PPE. d. Maybe, you might need to pay as PPE is provided at your employer's discretion. Correct answer is, b. No, your employer must provide all PPE necessary to carry out a job. Question 5. What should you do if you're given a task that requires you to wear a full body harness but you've never used one before? A. Carry on and try to work it out yourself. B. Ask a colleague who wears one for advice. C. Ask for an expert to train you. D. Ask for the instruction manual and figure it out yourself. Correct answer is, C. Ask for an expert to train you. Question 6. Which of these best describes a toolbox talk? A. It's a detailed guide on how to store your tools safely. B. It's a short discussion on a specific health and safety topic. C. It's a guide that outlines the tools approved for use on site. D. It's a guide that explains the benefits of choosing the right tools for a job. Correct answer is, B. It's a short discussion on a specific health and safety topic. Question 7. What purpose does a steel toe serve in a work boot? A. Increased traction when working from heights. B. Increased comfort. C. The steel will keep the foot more aerated than a normal boot. D. Protection against falling debris from above. Correct answer is, D. Protection against falling debris from above. Question 8. Equipment being used has recently been served a prohibition notice. If you are using this equipment, what should you do? A. If the device seems to be working properly, continue to use it. B. Nothing, the notice is only for a specific employee. C. Cease using the device until it has passed a safety inspection. D. Report the notice to your supervisor at the end of your shift. Correct answer is, C. Cease using the device until it has passed a safety inspection. Question 1. What should you do if the toilet on your work site doesn't work and is always in a messy state? A. Avoid using the toilet. B. Investigate and try to fix the problem. C. Leave the site on your break and use the toilet in a nearby shop. D. Speak to your supervisor about the problem. Question 1 Answer D. Speak to your supervisor about the problem. Hint, your employer is required by law to provide adequate toilet facilities. Inform your supervisor and let him handle the situation. Question 2 What should you do when you're cleaning up dust after completing a task? A. Ensure you're wearing your protective mask. B. Ensure you dampen down the area. C. Ensure there's adequate ventilation. D. All of the above. Question 2 Answer. D. All of the above. Hint, your first priority is to protect yourself and others that might be affected by any dust created. Question 3. Why is it important for you to control and minimize dust from getting into the air? A. Constantly inhaling dust particles can cause lung problems in the future. B. Less dust means less cleaning up afterwards. C. Dust is always in the air and it does not cause harm. D. Dust in the air will affect your vision. Question 3 Answer A. Constantly inhaling dust particles can cause lung problems in the future. Hint, inhaling dust can cause severe and even fatal lung problems. Question 4. What should you do if you're given a tool which has a broken electrical wire? A. Ask one of your colleagues to try and fix the problem. B. Get some electrical tape and cover the exposed wire. C. Stop using the tool and report it immediately. D. Carry on working but avoid that particular area. Question 4 Answer C. Stop using the tool and report it immediately. Hint, if a tool is unsafe for work it should be reported immediately. Question 5. 
disposable masks should be used no more down? A. 7 working days. B. 9 working days. C. 1 day or 1 shift. D. 10 working days. Question 5 Answer. C. 1 day or 1 shift. Hint. Disposable masks are similar to disposable earplugs and should not be used more than one day or one shift. Question 6. For maximum protection when using a mask you should A. Ensure you're using the correct type of mask for the job. B. Ensure you're wearing the mask correctly. C. Ensure you've passed a face fit test for that specific mask. D. All of the above. Question 6 Answer, D. All of the above. Hint, to ensure you're protected, you'll need the right mask for the job, you'll need to wear it as recommended in the instructions and you will need to make sure it fits correctly. Question 7. Before starting your shift you're given a dust mask that's too big and keeps falling off, what should you do? A. Ask for a mask that fits securely and wait until you have the correct RPE before starting. B. Ask your colleague to borrow his mask then carry on working. C. Carry on working and get another one after your shift ends. D. Carry on working with the big mask until you can get another one. Question 7 Answer. A. Ask for a mask that fits securely and wait until you have the correct RPE before starting. Hint. You should never start working until you have the correct PPE slash RPE for the job. Question 8. Being constantly exposed to loud noises can cause permanent ear damage, can this be reversed? A. No, ear damage cannot be reversed. B. Yes, eventually your hearing will return to normal. C. Yes, you can have a simple operation to reverse this. D. Yes. Staying away from noisy environments can slowly reverse this. Question 8 Answer A. No, ear damage cannot be reversed. Hint, permanent hearing loss cannot be reversed so care must be taken by using correct PPE. Question 9. Hand arm vibration syndrome or vibration white finger can be described as A. A severe rash on your arm that's caused by exposure to hazardous substances. B. A sign that your hands are on the way to becoming permanently injured. C. An airborne disease that can affect your breathing. D. Frostbite that can lead to permanent damage to your arms and fingers. Question 9 Answer. B. A sign that your hands are on the way to becoming permanently injured. Hint, hand arm vibration syndrome or halves is an early sign that your hands are on the way to becoming permanently injured. Question 10. If you're required to use skin barrier cream, when should this be applied? A. At the end of your shift. B. Before your shift starts. C. This should only be used if you can't find your gloves. D. This should only be used as part of first aid treatment. Question 10. Answer. B. Before your shift starts. Hint. Skin barrier cream should be applied before your shift starts. Question 1. Who can assemble, dismantle or change a tube when you are fitting scaffold? A. Someone who thinks they are able to do it. B. Some who has the right tools for the job. C. Someone who is competent and authorized. D. The project manager. Question 1 Answer. C. Someone who is competent and authorized. Question 2. Why should you not paint a ladder? A. The paint will make the surface slippy to use. B. If painted it could hide damage on the metal parts of the ladder. C. The paint may hide any damaged parts. D. It will need to be regularly repainted. Question 2 Answer. C. The paint may hide any damaged parts. Question 3. You are up on a roof that is flat. How can you best make sure you will not fall over the side of the roof? A. Use a guardrail and tow boards to protect the sides. B. You can use white and red tape to mark out the edge. C. 
If at the edge of the roof you put a warning sign. D. Get someone to watch you while you are up on the roof and when you get close to the edge shout. Question 3 Answer A. Use a guardrail and tow boards to protect the sides. Question 4. You can cross over a fragile roof only if A. Use the bolts to walk along. B. You can see sign pointing out that it is a fragile roof. C. If you stay away from any and do not walk on the plastic panels. D. With the use of crawling boards. Question 4 Answer D. With the use of crawling boards. Question 5. At the same time how many people can use one ladder? A. 1. B. 2. C. 3 if it is long enough. D. 1 on each section of an extension ladder. Question 5 Answer A. 1. Question 6. You go to use a ladder but you find that the ladder is damaged, what should you do? A. Use the ladder if you can avoid using the damaged parts. B. Try and mend the damaged ladder. C. Make others aware of the damage and do not use it yourself. D. Do not use it and report it at the end of your shift. Question 6 Answer C. Make others aware of the damage and do not use it yourself. Question 7. You are about to use a ladder. At what angle should the ladder be placed? A. 40 degrees. B. 50 degrees. C. 65 degrees. D. 75 degrees. Question 7 Answer. D. 75 degrees. Question 8. You want to stop stacked materials from going over the tow boards. How can you best achieve this? A. Fit brick guards. B. Attach a large warning sign to the material stack. C. Construct the materials in such a way that it will lean away from the edge. D. By covering the stack of material with a net. Question 8 Answer. A. Fit brick guards. Question 9. Some materials need to be lifted to a platform and a guardrail needs to be removed. You are not a scaffolder. Can you remove the rail? A. Yes, if you put it back as soon as the material has been landed. B. No, only a scaffolder can remove the guardrail but you can put it back. C. No, only a scaffolder can remove and replace the guardrail. D. Yes. If you put it back at the end of your shift. Question 9 Answer C. No, only a scaffolder can remove and replace the guardrail. Question 10. Before a ladder is used, who should check it? A. The person who is going to use it. B. The manufacturer. C. A supervisor. D. The site safety officer. Question 10 Answer A. The person who is going to use it. Question 11. You want to make sure the ladder you are about to use will be secure and will not have the chance of slipping. How can you do this? A. Wedge the bottom of the ladder with blocks of wood. B. You should tie the ladder at the bottom. C. You can ask if someone will be able to stand with their feet at the bottom. D. Tie it at the top. Question 11 Answer D. Tie it at the top. Question 12. You are working above water and there is a risk of falling. Which two items of PPE do you need? A. Wellington boots. B. Dot waterproof jacket. C. Harness and lanyard. D. Life jacket. E. Waterproof trousers. Question 12 Answer C. Harness and lanyard. D. Life jacket. Question 13. Which statement is true if you want to use a ladder to be able to get access to a scaffolding platform? A. Two people must be on the ladder at all times. B. All of the broken rungs must be clearly marked and visible to others. C. You must wedge the ladder from the bottom so the ladder will not slip. D. 
It must be tied and extend about five rungs above the platform. Question 13 Answer D. It must be tied and extend about five rungs above the platform. Question 14. Objects can easily fall from a scaffolding platform. How can you best protect the people below? A. Tell the people below to stop work and clear the area. B. Use brick guards to stop anything falling below. C. Make sure they are wearing safety helmets. D. Tell them you will be working above. Question 14 Answer B. Use brick guards to stop anything falling below. Question 15. In what circumstance will you be able to use a ladder as a place of work? A. Only if you will be doing light work for a short period. B. If you can find a ladder to use. C. If it is long enough. D. If other people do not need to use it for access. Question 15 Answer A. Only if you will be doing light work for a short period. Question 1. What does it mean when a work site is given a prohibition notice? A. The work site has to undergo review. B. Your supervisor has been fined for lack of safety protocol. C. The skilled crew members are the only people who can continue working. D. All workers must stop work immediately. The correct answer is D. All workers must stop work immediately. Question 2. While operating power tools, what are the minimum requirements? A. Must be at least 16 years of age. B. Must be at least 21 years of age. C. Must be at least 18 years of age. D. Must be trained and knowledgeable about power tools. The correct answer is D. Must be trained and knowledgeable about power tools. Question 3. If someone on your work site is using loud equipment and you do not have proper protective equipment, which action should you take? A. Leave the area and require proper PPE for your ears. B. Complain to your supervisor. C. Tell co-worker to stop working. D. Continue working without proper equipment. The correct answer is A. Leave the area and require proper PPE for your ears. Question 4. You notice a ladder is damaged, what should you do? A. Put the ladder to the side. B. Use ladder while avoiding the damaged part. C. Stop using the damaged ladder and report broken ladder to co-workers. D. Repair ladder then continue working. The correct answer is C. Stop using the damaged ladder and report broken ladder to co-workers. Question 5. Why are risk assessments vital to the workplace? A. They identify the supervisors of the job site. B. They identify accident statistics on job site. C. They identify the location of equipment on job site. D. They identify hazards and provide safety precautions on the job site. The correct answer is D. They identify hazards and provide safety precautions on the job site. Question 6. What action should you take if a load is too heavy and is unable to break into smaller parts? A. Use a forklift despite a lack of training. B. Carry the load quickly. C. Wait until there is help. D. Drag the load across the job site yourself. The correct answer is C. Wait until there is help. Question 7. How can one identify a hazardous substance? A. The container's color. B. The substance's color. C. The container has a blue label. D. The specific symbol on the label. The correct answer is D. 
the specific symbol on the label. Question 8. What health issues can solvents in paints lead to? A. Headaches and dizziness. B. Lung issues. C. Other issues with the body. D. All of the above. The correct answer is D. All of the above. Question 9. Of the following. Which does not belong in a fire triangle? A. CO2. B. Fuel. C. Oxygen. D. Ignition sources. The correct answer is A. CO2. Question 10. Which action below causes the most accidents on work sites? A. Electrocution. B. Poisoning. C. Slips and falls. D. Suffocation. The correct answer is C. Slips and falls. Question 11. What safety precautions should be taken to ensure safety? A. Get the job done as quickly as possible. B. Read and fully understand the instructions and assessment. C. Read the safety posters. D. Talk to co-workers about it. The correct answer is B. Read and fully understand the instructions and assessment. Question 12. Which fire extinguishers are black and cream? A. CO2 and water. B. CO2 and dry powder. C. H2O and foam. D. CO2 and foam. The correct answer is D. CO2 and foam. Question 13. What is the proper form when lifting a load from the ground? A. Knees straight bent back. B. Feet spread wide as possible. C. Feet slightly apart. Knees bent. D. Feet together. Knees straight. The correct answer is C. Feet slightly apart. Knees bent. Question 14. Which of the following people are allowed to activate the fire alarm? A. Anyone who finds the fire. B. A health and safety representative. C. Your supervisor. D. Your manager. The correct answer is A. Anyone who finds the fire. Question 15. How many days can a disposable mask be used? A. 10. B. 7. C. 1. D. 6. The correct answer is C. 1. Question 16. Why is it important to keep a clean workspace? A. Keeps away animals. B. Reduces risk of accidents such as slipping and falling. C. Helps lessen environmental impact. D. All of the above. The correct answer is D. All of the above. Question 17. Which of the following causes a class of fire? A. Live electric. B. Kerosene. Gas. C. Wood. Plastic. Paper. And any other solid material. D. Cooking oils. The correct answer is C. Wood. Plastic. Paper. And any other solid material. Question 18. How can one tell if a substance is asbestos? A. Ask the supervisor. B. Ask your co-workers. C. Sniff the substance. D. Have it tested in a lab. The correct answer is D. Have it tested in a lab.
Question 19. What is the best way to see if a load is too heavy for you to lift? A. Check description that is provided with the load. B. Slightly lift load then drop immediately. C. Check to see height of load and determine. D. Calculate the length and height of load. The correct answer is A. Check description that is provided with the load. Question 20. What indication is shown by a blue health and safety sign? A. Hazard sign. B. Stop sign. C. Prohibition sign. D. Mandatory sign. The correct answer is D. Mandatory sign. Question 21. What substance is inside a blue fire extinguisher? A. Carbon dioxide. B. H20. C. Dry powder. D. Foam. The correct answer is C. Dry powder. Question 22. During an accident, a first aider can do all except which of the following? A. Do CPR. B. Bandage cuts. C. Prescribe medicine. D. Move victim while unconscious. The correct answer is C. Prescribe medicine. Question 23. Which equipment are given prohibition notices? A. Skilled workers only. B. Should not be used until safe. C. Managers only. D. Supervisors only. The correct answer is B. Should not be used until safe. Question 24. Why is it important to collect dust while using power tools? A. Enhanced performance of tools. B. Save time. C. Substance can be harmful when inhaled. D. Avoid making a mess. The correct answer is C. Substance can be harmful when inhaled. Question 25. What action should be taken when a fire alarm is set off? A. Locate fire and put it out. B. Hide. C. Pack belongings and go to fire assembly point. D. Go directly to fire assembly point. The correct answer is D. Go directly to fire assembly point. Question 26. Which extinguisher of the following is best used for an electrical fire? A. Wet chemical. B. Foam. C. CO2. D. Water. The correct answer is C. CO2. Question 27. While on a building site. Who of the following can use a class 3 ladder? A. Class 3 ladders should not be used. B. Only trained workers. C. Anyone is allowed to use a class 3 ladder. D. Only supervisors. The correct answer is A. Class 3 ladders should not be used. Question 28. Which person should a serious accident be reported to? A. HSE inspectors. B. The local police. C. An employer. D. The worksite security. The correct answer is C. An employer. Question 29. A sign that shows a fire and finger pressing a button in red and white means? A. The area is a fire assembly point. B. The area has a fire extinguisher. C. There is a fire alarm. D. B and C. The correct answer is C. There is a fire alarm. Question 30. While putting out an electrical fire, 
If a CO2 extinguisher is not available, which should you use? A. Dry power extinguisher. B. H2O extinguisher. C. Wet chemical extinguisher. D. CO2 extinguisher. The correct answer is A. Dry power extinguisher. Question 31. What is an employer's responsibility while a worker is a lifting a load? A. The worker is responsible for themselves. B. Employer has to provide a risk assessment. C. Employer must watch worker lift. D. Employer has to lift load themselves. The correct answer is B. Employer has to provide a risk assessment. Question 32. If climbing heights on a ladder makes you uncomfortable, which action should you take? A. Use a shorter ladder. B. Ask a co-worker to do the work. C. Talk to the supervisor. D. Only climb as high as you feel like. The correct answer is C. Talk to the supervisor. Question 33. What action should be taken when a live electrical wire falls into the water? A. Ignore the issue and report after work. B. Avoid the area as quickly as possible. C. Remove the wire yourself. D. Notify co-workers immediately. The correct answer is D. Notify co-workers immediately. Question 34. Can hearing loss be reversed after working on a construction site with excessive noise? A. Damage is irreversible. B. Hearing can come back with surgery. C. The hearing will return when you change jobs. D. Hearing repairs self. The correct answer is A. Damage is irreversible. Question 35. Of the following, which is the best definition of a hazard? A. Chemicals that are unlabeled. B. A substance of action that is potentially harmful. C. Cables that are left on the floor. D. Tools that are left on the floor. The correct answer is B. A substance of action that is potentially harmful. Question 36. What should be done with unlabeled bottles of chemicals? A. Ignore the bottle. B. Dispose of bottle yourself. C. Sniff bottle to see if it is harmful. D. Report bottle to supervisor immediately. The correct answer is D. Report bottle to supervisor immediately. Question 37. Of the following, who should report on safe work practices? A. Anyone who notices. B. Supervisor only. C. Employer only. D. Co-workers only. The correct answer is A. Anyone who notices. Question 38. Which of the following is associated with Kosh? A. Safety while using ladders. B. Safety while using electrical equipment. C. Safety while lifting. D. Safety while handling hazardous materials. The correct answer is D. Safety while handling hazardous materials. Question 39. What is the safest way to lift a load? A. Feet as close as possible. B. Feet slightly apart. C. Back rounded. D. Back straight. The correct answer is D. Back straight. Question 40. Which year was the Health and Safety at Work Act passed? A. 1978 B 1975 C 1974 D 1947 
The correct answer is C. 1974. Question 41. Which action should be taken if a worker is unsure about a certain topic on the site induction? A. Ask presenter to explain more. B. Ask health and safety representative during next break. C. Ask the next day. D. Ask co-workers. The correct answer is A. Ask presenter to explain more. Question 42. Which of the following are not part of a worker's responsibility? A. Report dangerous work practices. B. Provide a PPE. C. Record risk assessments. D. Discuss concerns over safety. The correct answer is, B and C B, provide a PPE, C, record risk assessments. Question 43. What does the term pass stand for while using a fire extinguisher? A, point, aim, smother, squeeze. B, point, aim, squeeze, sweep. C, point, aim, sweep, squeeze. D, point, aim, squeeze, smother. The correct answer is B. Point, aim, squeeze, sweep. Question 44. How many workers need to be employed at a company before they need to record a risk assessment? A. 5 to 10. B. 10 to 30. C. Only 1. D. More than 5. The correct answer is D. More than 5. Question 45. Which precaution should be taken after discovering a crack in your safety helmet? A. Replace on next break. B. Carry on working. C. Get a replacement as quickly as possible. D. Glue the crack and continue working. The correct answer is C. Get a replacement as quickly as possible. Question 46. What color is a wet chemical fire extinguisher? A. Orange. B. Yellow. C. Black. D. White. The correct answer is B. Yellow. Question 47. How many times can disposable earplugs be used? A. Three times. B. Twice. C. Once. D. As many times as you'd like so long as they are cleaned. The correct answer is C. Once. Question 48. When should eye protection be used while working? A. In direct sunlight. B. While using power tools. C. When the site demands it. D. While handling hazardous chemicals. The correct answer is C. When the site demands it. Question 49. Which action should be taken when a child is found on the job site? A. Tell your employer. B. Tell your supervisor. C. Continue working. D. Take child off site quickly. The correct answer is D. Take child off site quickly. Question 50. Which health and safety signs have a triangle shape? A. Smoking sign. B. Hazard sign. C. Prohibition sign. D. Mandatory sign. The correct answer is B. Hazard sign.